Hey guys, Gameboy3 Gone here once again with another computer case review. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but nonetheless, let's see what we've gotten here. This here is a, a Raid Max Alpha Light. Now, I've used Raid Max in the past and have been satisfied with their uh, cases before, so let's see how this one stands up. I got this for $37 plus shipping, so pretty cheap, and it seemed to have all the right features. It's full ATX. Uh, it's got good airflow in the front. And, well, it was cheap. And it had good reviews as well. So I thought, why not take a look at it? So that's why I'm here today. There we go. Let's go ahead and get this unit here flipped over. Looks like one screw has come loose. And something or other. There we go. The handles here are being a bit done with the box. Oh well, that's kind of what you get sometimes. There we go. Not a bad unboxing experience. I uh, did lose that screw. I don't know what it was for. Uh, packing list. That's just good for that. And this looks to be the top of the case, so I'll have it up like this for the rest of the video. Oh no, that's the bottom. Okay. Here we go. And I must say, it looks the part. I think it looks pretty cool. At least in this color scheme. Maybe uh, the all black would have also looked cool. But I didn't see that one for sale. Or at least on sale. Look at this. We've got a nice big window. Should be good for seeing all the insides. Let's go ahead and take it off and just see how it looks. Looks like it arrived in one piece. Uh, it is not glass, it is uh, some kind of plexiglass or something, or otherwise plastic, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be an expensive material. In fact, I like the fact that this is so cheap. That's why a lot of people seem to have been buying it. The rear panel uh, does not have any bowing on the outside here to give extra cable management. So we will have to hope that the case itself gives all the cable management on its own. Go. Uh, looks like the only fan included is this little wimpy 120 mil, which is uh, Molex powered, and it can be powered by the motherboard. So that's not the most ideal. Let's go ahead and take a look at I/O next. On the left side here, we have power and reset, and the LED lights. And on the right side here, we have USB three two and uh headphone microphone oh no there's both usb3 that's good to see let's see how easy it is to take off the front panel sometimes cheap cases like this don't have uh, the best front panel access so let's see this there we go nice and easy exactly how you would expect and it is also magnetized 
to make sure it wouldn't fall off. Not that that's necessary. Oh, what is this? There's some paper in between the front mesh here. There we go. Yeah, that's just paper to make sure nothing gets in during shipping. Otherwise, it is completely open and very good for airflow. And this is cool, actually. For this price point, this is really good to see. You can mount three fans and a five and a quarter inch bay. If you have a DVD drive or otherwise some kind of other five and a quarter inch mount, this is probably a deal maker for you. Now with the case all opened up like this, we can see that along with having some pretty roomy internals from the front and the left side, from the right side you can see that we do have ourselves a hard drive bay or that can fit looks like up to two, three hard drives. That's pretty good. Uh, the brackets themselves are probably the flimsiest thing about this build so far. Uh, but at least they're there. Yeah, they have rubber mounts for the hard drives, but this one is coming unstuck just from the factory. Not too good there, but uh, it looks like you maybe could fit three if you can find another drive sled, but two is more than enough for this price point. How does the back look for cable management? This is important because the right side panel does not have any bulge or anything to allow for extra cable management. So, uh, this is cool. We have a magnetic top dust filter. So here's a look at the top. You can see that everything is on rails and it looks like we can fit uh, two 120 or 140 mil fans up top. Maybe even three if you uh, do 120s. That is really cool to see. This case's cooling capacity is huge. Although there's not much space up top for a radiator, this would only be for fans. But yeah, just having magnetic dust filter is actually kind of worth it alone. Not many high-end cases have those. But yeah, getting back to uh, the camel management. Uh, power supply goes on down here. What kind of dust filter are we looking at down here? Uh, yeah, it's the bad kind of dust filter where it's like very difficult to get at. You have to tilt the case to its side to get at it. But it does at least have a dust filter. Cable management, we got some ties, not very many of them. We have the usual cable cutout, so that's cool to see. And we do have, looks like dual included uh, two and a half inch sleds here for SSDs. We got a securing thumb screw here that is not over tightened. I will say so far that none of the screws in this build have been over tightened so that you need a screwdriver. That is really good to see from the factory. And here's our drive sled. Uh, I am going to guess that inside this box is a way to just slide on the SSD. Otherwise, uh, there's four screw holes on either the bottom or on the sides to easily mount the SSD. So far, this case is proving to be well worth its value. At least to me. There's one thing it could have, and that's more fans. But I think that would be uh, pushing it for this price point of $40, of $35, and so on. Because, you know, just having all these extra fans or fan mounts makes you want to use them. And it's a shame that it doesn't come with... Uh, all of them by default, or at least one more in front. But I will probably end up just using this case stock because it is so open. Let's go ahead and put it back together here. It's so open and it looks pretty good too. And yeah, this is also good. The five and a quarter inch bay is just uh, clipped in, so you can put the cover back on too to keep the looks if you. Uh, have a five and a quarter inch drive and then decide to drop it out for some other part. Seems pretty good. How is it? How easy is it to put back together? 
very seamless. All right, let's go for that right side first since that's what I got right here. Now, cable management may be a bit of an issue. I will do a full build on this to see how it really is. But for that with it empty, that wasn't too hard to put back on. That's that side. Oh, this is also cool. Before uh, we put the other side panel back on, let's take a look at a few more features I just noticed. Uh, you have a cable hideout here, so you can easily route the 24 pin and shine the cables through here, maybe even video card cables. And it has ATX mounts pre mounted. Nice to see there. It seems to also have some kind of screw here, but oh, that's for the two and a half inch drive sleds. And here's more things. I'm just finding a lot of things in this case I'm not expecting to see. We have the, the same two and a half inch drive sleds that we saw on the back of this panel can be put here as well. So if you want even more expansion, just get more of those sleds and put them here. And they do have the screws, the screw mounts to be locked in place too. The power supply shroud also has a GPU power cutout so you can easily arp drop your cables there. And as for modularity, uh, it seems that not only the hard drive is removable, it looks like it's on a rail, so that's really cool to see. Or at least you can move it forward a little bit more if you wanted to, if you don't need that bottom bay. But so far, this case is super impressive to me. Let's go ahead and get this left side panel back on. Probably not necessary to mention, but it looks like you could rotate uh, the side panels out of the left side goes on the right side if for whatever reason you don't want to see the right side or left side, I mean. And here we are, it's all back together, ready to be built in. I have a Ryzen 7 1700X build that I will quickly go over the parts for and then cut to when it's built. And then I will go over my experiences in building the, in this case. And then we'll see how the thermals are stock and with some extra front fans. And yeah, I'll see you in a second. All right, here's all the parts we're going to be using today. We have a Seasonic Gold rated power supply, 530 watts, I think. A one terabyte WD Blue hard drive. A AMD RX 580, four gigabyte, provided by MSI. We have uh, another MSI part here. Actually not sponsored, but I just have a lot of MSI parts. Uh, this is a B350 Tomahawk with an XPG 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And underneath this Wraith Prism Cooler is a Ryzen 7 1700X. And we have 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. I don't really know how much. It's hit or miss with 6 or 18 or 8 or 18 or 8 or 16, I mean. <laughs> don't worry, I'm okay. But yeah, this is what's going to be going into this case. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to be filming the build process. I'll just let you know of my thoughts after it is all put together. So yeah. I'll see you with a finished build. I'll have the side panel off, but I will have it back on for its first power on. Well, here it is. It's all put together. Uh, overall, it was a very standard and easy build to do. Uh, no complaints except for uh, MSI. They did not label their motherboard standoff, so I had a result to the manual. Uh, that's MSI's fault, though. Next fault was uh, the back panel. I had to really work for the cable management to get it to close good. But you can see that there is no bulge, or if there is, it's like the slightest bulge ever. So, you do have enough room to clean it up back there, but you have to use a lot of cable ties. But I guess that's what you expect. 
overall you can see pretty clean inside nice to see how it all cleaned up a few too many cables since they're all coming out of that one central cutout i would have liked one more in the bottom left there now, as for top routing it was very easy you can see we have plenty of space and huge holes to route the cpu headers it can be on the left or right side of the board. You can see we have very easy access. And one thing you won't really have easy access to is fans. Uh, you will need to make sure that they are probably low profile. Maybe you would get a regular 120 mil fan up there, but I don't know. It'd be pretty close to hitting that connector there. So watch out for that. A 24 pin cable. It is a tight squeeze to get through there, but you can see once you got, got it there, it cleans up really well. Really, really well, in fact. And other than the cables at the bottom, I think it's a pretty clean looking system. Let's go ahead and get that side panel back on and take a look at how it is complete. And here's how it looks with the side panel on. And it is a pretty sick looking system. The front looks a little bit empty without any fans. Uh, I will probably try to put a fan in there, at least one, to see if it adds any additional cooling performance. But I think it's just so open anyways that a negative pressure setup with the rear exhaust fan will be good enough. And yeah, give it up for the Raid Max. I think it looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a keyboard and mouse and a monitor and power it up. All right, here we go. Got a nice old Dell PS2 keyboard because PS2 keyboards are the best keyboards. And we have a Voodoo mouse. Let's poke the power button and see what happens. It shines. Let's see how it'll interact with an ancient monitor like this, because this is what I had standing here. It may just go straight to desktop because it boots so fast. Here we go. Oh no. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We'll just let it do a full boot cycle here. Because it had Windows updates, I guess. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at it while it's doing that. You can see it looking pretty in there. And the side looking good, and the motherboard's looking cool as well. Without any of the plastic on, this will be quite the system. Got the power LED and drive LED cycling. And it'll be quieter once it's like behind a desk or something, but take a listen to it. The loudest thing, I think, is the hard drive, and that is taking... Why is that doing two boot cycles? I guess I'll meet you at the desktop. This is taking a while. All right, after at least one too many reboots, we are finally here. And I should have Firmark, yep. Let's see how Firmark does for the GPU stress test. Uh, that'll be fine. Let's go. And this might take a while, so I'll just come back in, say, 15, 20 minutes and see what we settle at. All right, I'm back. It's about 14, 15 minutes later, just like I said. GPU is topping out at about 73 degrees. Let's fuel that side panel. Side panel is a little bit warm. How's the heat coming out the back? There's a lot of heat coming out the back. Good to see that that fan's working, even though it's not the most high speed or high pressure thing. Uh, yeah, there is some excess heat coming off the top with that dust filter, so that's good to see. All right, let's go ahead and end the power virus. And we'll let it cool down a little bit. And I'll see if I can find myself a CPU stress test. Alright. Uh, all 16 threads seem to be loaded up with Prime 95. 
I believe Ryzen detects when the power virus is on and it'll run at a lower clock rate. Uh, I can go ahead and confirm this. Let's just poke task manager right quick. What is our performance? What's our clock speed? I don't know, we're going up to 3.3 .3 gigahertz. Yeah, it's right below base speed. It's detecting a power virus, but still, let's see what temperatures get up to here. Looks like we're at a 68 for a temperature around, or, you know, mid to high 60s. That's not too bad, but I'll let it build up for 10, 20 minutes, just as I did, it, as I did for the video card. And, well, looking like this, it seems good. Next, I'll, uh, for the final test, I'll load up, uh, say, 8 threads, or 12 threads of the processor, and then load uh, Firmark on top of that. So we'll get a max temperature situation to see what it can run at in this fairly cool, but not very well, air-conditioned room. Or I shouldn't say that, but, you know, not very well uh, ventilated case, as in there's no front airflow. Alright, it's been running for a hot minute, and the T-Dye temperature is showing uh, 65, looks about. CPU die average 67. It looks like it spiked to 85, or I don't really know what that is. It's been running for 20 minutes, or at least hardware info has, so that's pretty good. Let's go ahead, stop the Prime 95 test. Give it a little while to cool down. And then I should just be able to continue that. Yep. I'll continue that. Actually, no, I need to edit that. So I'll exit that. Edit it for 12 of the 16 threads. To uh, attempt to try to show the uh, combined stress test we got. I just feel that heat coming off the back. It's not as bad as with the GPU, which makes sense. The video card has a lot more surface area dumping heat into the case than the processor, so. Yep. I'll come back in a little bit, let it cool. And we'll finish off. Alright, looks like we're good to go. Prime 95 loading up with 12 threads. And Firmark getting ready to run the stress test. So here we can see the CPU temperatures on the right and the GPU temperatures on the left. Let's watch this live for a minute or two. See what happens. See how much noise has ended up being made. So far, it's been pretty quiet. The loudest thing probably has been the hard drive somewhat clicking away as it does a backup or something. I don't expect too much change for the GPU. I suspect that'll hit about 72 to 75 as it did before. But the CPU, we need to see what that'll reach now that the GPU is dumping heat in it as it's trying to cool itself even more. Already the heat's starting to get out the back pretty well. Waiting for that maximum number to go up on the CPU. Currently, it's sitting between 50 and 71, like between the edge and central dies, it looks like. I'm pretty sure that's what that means, right? Maybe. The yeah, average before was 67.5. Or maximum for like the die average. I guess that average bar is overall, overall. All 
Gotta remember that it's not a... Uh, full-on CPU test. Four threads are still active for the GPU test. Just to make sure that that's actually going at full speed. Alright, GPU is getting up there to its temperature ceiling. Let's see how... Uh, it handles with the CPU also doing it. And I'll show a test for the power supply. This is a CSONIC Gold. It's about 550 or 600 watts. I forget exactly which number it is, but... You know, it's around the average of 500 to 600 watts that most people like to get. So... You know... But it's a good, it's a good power supply. I like CSONIC. I wish they would sponsor me. I would definitely make a monster truck for Seasonic. It'd have a cool little symbol on it. It'd be cool. I don't know. That's what I like to do in my other videos. I do uh, monster truck games. So that's why I said that. I don't know. You don't care if you're watching a case review. Which, I must say, is holding up quite, quite well. All right, uh, we'll let this go on for five minutes. See what the temperatures are. GPU is not really getting any hotter than it was before, which is what I expected. Yeah, the air is coming out real hot now. Nice and warm. It's telling you that that fan's doing a good job. Not too much heat escaping from the top. And yeah, that seems about it. It's running full bore. Maybe it'd get a tiny bit louder. But I deem this very acceptable. Now just for the sake of making it look good, I would probably add more fans in. But if you are on a tight budget, this case very well more than gets it done. Highly, highly recommended. If you guys found this review at all helpful, then please do go ahead, leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course, don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, Gamble Out. I'll see you all in the future in another video, hopefully. Goodbye.